Have you ever paused to ponder why the United States is unwavering in its support for Israel's actions in Gaza, even amidst accusations of genocide? This question is not just a philosophical musing, but a pressing query that has divided opinions across the nation. A recent poll conducted by YouGov and The Economist has revealed a startling divide. Half of those who voted for President Joe Biden believe Israel is committing genocide against Palestinian civilians in the ongoing war in Gaza. Yet this belief is not universally held. A considerable 20% of Biden voters disagreed, while a sizable 30% remained unsure. The issue has even stirred divisions within the Democratic Party over US support for Israel. As the death toll in Gaza exceeds 25,000, we must ask, is the US complicit in these acts? To understand the current situation, we need to look back at the timeline of events leading up to the US court's appeal to the Biden administration. The escalation of the war in Gaza was a critical turning point that sparked international outcry. As the conflict intensified, the death toll in Gaza exceeded 25,000 people, leading to protests and calls for a ceasefire. Amidst this turmoil, a poll conducted by YouGov and The Economist revealed a stark divide in public opinion. 50% of voters who voted for President Joe Biden in the 2020 election believed that Israel was committing genocide against Palestinian civilians. This public sentiment was echoed in a lawsuit filed against President Biden and his senior administration officials, accusing them of complicity in Israel's genocidal acts in Gaza. The lawsuit was brought forth by Palestinian human rights groups and individual Palestinians, who challenged the administration's support for Israel. However, the lawsuit was met with a setback when Judge Jeffrey White of the U.S. District Court dismissed it on jurisdictional grounds. The judge maintained that the matter lay outside the jurisdiction of his court, as the plaintiffs were asking the court to interfere with U.S. foreign policy. He affirmed, because any determination to challenge the decision of the executive branch of government on support of Israel is fraught with serious political questions. The claims presented by plaintiffs here lie outside the court's limited jurisdiction. Despite the dismissal, the court did not stay silent on the issue. It implored the Biden administration to examine the results of their unflagging support of the military siege against the Palestinians in Gaza. The court also ruled that Israel's war on Gaza, which began in early October, plausibly amounts to genocide. While the court dismissed the lawsuit, it did not shy away from expressing its concerns about the administration's unflagging support for Israel's actions in Gaza. The court's ruling may have been a dismissal, but it was by no means an endorsement of the administration's stance. The U.S. District Court in California, presided by Judge Jeffrey White, delivered a verdict that, while seeming to be a dismissal, echoed a profound dissent over the Biden administration's unflagging support for Israel's aggressive actions in Gaza. The judge dismissed the lawsuit on jurisdictional grounds, asserting that the court was bound by precedent and the division of our government's branches to abstain from exercising jurisdiction in this case. But his words were far from empty. Judge White's ruling expressly urged the defendants, President Biden and his senior administration officials, to scrutinize the outcomes of their relentless backing of the military onslaught against the Palestinians in Gaza. He clarified his decision, stating that the Palestinian groups were essentially asking the court to meddle in US foreign policy, which lies outside his court's jurisdiction. Here's where it gets interesting. The court ruled that Israel's war on Gaza, which began in early October, plausibly amounts to genocide. Yet, as the ICJ has found, it is plausible that Israel's conduct amounts to genocide, the judge stated. This phrase, embedded in the ruling, carries a weighty implication for the Biden administration and could potentially precipitate a political fallout. The case, brought forward by Palestinian human rights groups and individual Palestinians against the US president and his senior administration officials, thrusts into the limelight the question of complicity in Israel's genocidal acts in Gaza. This ruling, albeit jurisdictionally limited, underscores a critical question. Is the US inadvertently endorsing genocide through its unwavering support for Israel? The answer to this question might be politically charged and morally complex, but it's a question that demands attention. The court's ruling has underscored a critical question. 
Is the US inadvertently endorsing genocide through its unwavering support for Israel? In the wake of the court's ruling, there are more questions than answers. The reaction from stakeholders was swift and varied. Brad Parker, a senior advisor at Defense for Children International Palestine, expressed disappointment at the court's decision, stating unequivocally that US weapons were instrumental in what he referred to as genocide. Ahmed Aboufoul, a Palestinian attorney at Al Haq, echoed this sentiment, acknowledging the judge's recognition of genocide but lamenting the court's inability to act due to jurisdictional constraints. The court's ruling has placed the Biden administration in a precarious position, caught between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, there's the undeniable pull of historical alliances, geopolitical considerations, and domestic political pressures. On the other, there's a growing call for a re-evaluation of the US's unflagging support for Israel, especially in light of the escalating death toll in Gaza. The potential implications for US foreign policy are significant. Should the United States heed the court's plea and reconsider its support for Israel? If so, what form should this reconsideration take? How can the United States balance its strategic interests with its commitment to human rights and international law? These are complex, thorny questions that require careful thought and nuanced diplomacy. On a broader scale, the court's ruling and the subsequent reactions underscore the deep-seated divisions and contentious debates surrounding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They highlight the challenges of navigating the fraught landscape of international politics where morality and pragmatism often clash and where the quest for justice can sometimes feel like an uphill battle. As the death toll in Gaza continues to rise, the US finds itself at a crossroads. Will it heed the court's plea, or will it continue to support Israel unconditionally? Only time will tell.